From Nashville, Tennessee, comes your grand old opera. Of Benny Farrell, the Duke of Paducah, Eddie Arnold, the Tennessee Flower Boy, and a lot more. A half hour of fun music, folk songs, and good old mountain melodies. And now, here's the star of our show, the pride of Tennessee, Smoky Mountains, Roy Aker. Oh, well. Thank you, Louis Buck. Hello, friends. A show that means so much to the folks down south as home cooking does to a soldier. But talking never proved nothing, but deeds didn't prove a lot better. So just listen while the Smoky Mountain Boys play and sing an old railroad song called John Henry Was a Steel Driving Man. Keeps them supplied with hot air the year around. <laughs> well, here she is. Cousin Minnie Pearl. Self 
a new girl. Oh, you know, you've always heard tell that love will find a way, but I never knowed he'd go so first to find brother. Oh, he's got him a, a new girl, and her name is Sassafras Pinkle. That there's her name. He's awful proud of her. I believe they're just right down serious. Oh, she's done took to writing to him. Of course, brother can't read, and so I told him that I'd read the letters to him if he wanted me to, and he wouldn't let me till I promised to stuff cotton in my ears. <laughs> but now I'm telling you, Pezzy, Pezzy, that there's my fellers. Pezzy, I don't want to get these girls and fellers mixed up. I know which one's mine. I hope he knows which one's his. I'm, hey, see, he took one look at that girl of brothers, and he says to me, he says, Minnie Pearl, he says, that is the ugliest girl I've ever seen in my life. I said, well, Hezzy, beauty's only skin deep. He says, well, for Pete's sake, let's skin her. <laughs> but you know, brother, he ain't never been no prince for looks. Now, I never will forget it. It's this last week it was. Well, it is at night. I think it is a Wednesday night. We're sitting out on the front porch of cooling off. And there's Miss uh, Maddie Dulap. She come over to see us, and she's sitting there. And Brother was uh, sitting down on the edge of the porch, just sort of chewing on a straw. And he looked so, he just looked so sad like. He just looked plumb for sook. Well, he is uh, sitting there, and Mammy, she got worried about him. She's afraid he's sick. Or something, and she looked at Brother, and she says to Miss Maddie, she says, you know, I don't like the way Brother looks. I just don't like the way he looks at all. Miss Maddie, she looked at Brother, and she says, you know, I wasn't going to mention it, but he ain't much to look at, is he? <laughs> but sometimes I think it's Brother's hair. Now, I'll tell you about Brother's hair. Ain't many men as fine bangs for coming. And brother's hair looks like it just grows all the way around in bangs. Looks like never could get it cut right. We tried every bowl we had in the kitchen. <laughs> we never could get his hair to look right. I remember when he was just a little boy. He was just a growing up. Well, Uncle Algy come by. He was all time of doing a little trading round. He come by and had a sack of stuff there he'd been a trading for. And brother went in there and was kind of pawing through that stuff for Uncle Algy had. And all of a sudden... He run across a looking glass, and we never heard such a screeching in all our lives. Brother was just a hollering and a yelling. We went in there, and he was looking at that looking glass. He says, oh, look. He says, Uncle Algy has done brung home a wolf. <laughs> I'll be going now. See you next time. <laughs> Man. 
called Old Shep. Pretty done. Friends, our guest singer tonight, he's a real country boy, too, believe it or not. In fact, he's the country the first time he came to town, we had to put handles on the streetcar so he could get on them. It's Uncle Rufus Brewster, and he's a changing business all around tonight. I'm going to change my business all around. I'm going to move out in a little country town. Get me a mule and a turning plow somehow. Along with you, will you? <laughs> I'll raise the cornbread that I eat, fill my smokehouse full of meat, for I'm changing business all around. I'll get me a mule and a Jersey cow, 
going to change it, Uncle Rufus. That's Uncle Rufus's Brewster. I mean, Uncle Rufus Brewster, or Uncle Rufus's Rooster. Friends, you know some people have large families and some have small families. But here's a man who has more relatives than a 15-year-old rabbit. <laughs> who wrote that? The Duke of Paducah. Look like a couple of hot waffles. <laughs> uh, and all of my relatives were there, all of them, the good ones and the bad ones. Uh, Uncle Sidemeat was there. He's the black sheep in our family. Now, there's a man that's always been bad. He has always been bad. Why, when he was five years old, he was so bad, his parents run away from home. <laughs> now, that's a fact. Uh, Uncle, Uncle Sidemeat was a round-shouldered man. Yeah, he was round. We used to call him Stoopy, you know. Now, this might sound like an exaggeration, but Uncle Sidemeat was so round-shouldered he could lace his shoes standing up. <laughs> now, that's a fact there. Uh, you know, Uncle Sidemeat, he was got all of us in a little game of chance there on the gown. Uh, we was uh, rolling them galloping dominoes. You, you know what I mean? Huh? <laughs> well, I was down on my hands and knees, and I was all bent over, and I was trying to make my point, you know. <laughs> And it was a bull from the next passenger come charging across there, and he horned in. <laughs> wow. He made his point before I made mine. I, I, oh, there was one other uncle there that I think I ought to tell you about. That was Uncle Reedy. He's my thin uncle. Yeah. Uncle Reedy was thin. Oh, that was the skinniest man ever I seen. I'm telling you, that man was so thin... When he'd eat olives, you could tell how many he'd had. <laughs> now, that, that's the truth if I ever told it. And my wife's drinking brother, Willie, he was there, running all over every place, trying to borrow enough to get a drink of corn, you know, trying to borrow a little money. And finally, he borrowed four bits off of my comical cousin. Now, my comical cousin, he's the one that wears the wig on his old bald head, you know. <laughs> yeah. From the wag with the wig, Willie got enough swag for a swig. <laughs> oh, we, we had a time. We had our own entertainment. Yeah. And my, one of my ritzy cousins, she got up and she sang up their song called the Indian Love Call. <laughs> Didn't sound like no Indian Love Call to me. Of course, I don't want to talk about it here on the radio, so I ain't going to say what kind of a call it sound like. But I will say this. <laughs> when she got through singing it, every hog in the county was on the run. <laughs> You know, we had a contest, too. And my cousin Jenny, she got up on the platform, and she was voted the most beautiful. And then my cousin Susie, she got up on the platform, and she was voted the most graceful. And then my big fat wife got up on the platform, and she was voted the most. <laughs> now, now I know what it is that my big fat wife got that other women they got. 
more. <laughs> Where she walked, she left a double row of post holes. <laughs> you know, I took charge of the cooking for the reunion, and I made up a grand big wash boiler of soup. And it tasted good, too. <laughs> it would have tasted a whole lot better, too, if I had to take a wash out first. Uh, <laughs> you know, now my wife's sister was there, and she brought their new baby over for me to see. Little bitty thing. Well, this year's model, you know. And, uh... <laughs> that, that baby looked at me and it started to close its eyes and started to screaming. I said, what's that young and crying about? They said, oh, nothing. We just been telling him he looks like you. Uh. <laughs> well, sir, you know, I don't know nothing about babies, but they must have some newfangled way you can trade them in now. Because when my sister-in-law started to leave, I said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to change Junior. <laughs> You know, these family reunions... <laughs> Don't tell him, lady. These family reunions are all right until them in-laws start running down that family tree. And then that's time for me to go back to the wagon yelling, these shoes are killing me. <laughs> and hearing that laugh will give you fun guess who you're listening to. And you guess Rachel and her great big...
lots of requests for it. The unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Radio service. 